Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Dan and in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing my workflow. So this video is not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial or beginner tutorial. It's basically just showing you how I work in Ableton Live so that could hopefully spark up some ideas for your own personal workflow. So what I'll usually do to get started is I'll add an instrument right away. So I'll go click on the MIDI track, go to sounds, and let's add the grand piano. And then from there, I'll click here to add in a clip. And then I'll extend that to four bars so that it can loop. And then I'll add the scrubber over here, right click, hit loop. And then from here, I'll right click in the editor and choose quarter notes and then I'll just start adding in a chord. So for demonstration purposes, we'll just do the simplest chord, which is the C major chord, C, E, G. So I'll get that going four times. And, and yeah, we have uh, some chords going. And to vary it a little bit, I'll uh, click on these N, Gs, and then I'll hold Shift and press up on this one, I press shift and down to lower uh, the G an octave in this case. So that's uh, that will give the chords a little more variety. And then at that point, I'll have satisfied the higher end frequencies. So now I'm gonna add some low end. So going down here, we'll add another C chord, C major chord, but to the lower end, like such. So we'll keep it into the, in the C major chord so that everything is in harmony together. So all the keys are matching up and it doesn't sound like a bunch of noise. It sounds like they actually go together. And that's how this will sound. So very basic stuff going on here, probably the most basic it can get. But I've noticed that now that the keys are hitting pretty hard, so and that's because it's at 100 frequencies. So I'll select all the key velocities and I'll lower that down to let's say about 70-ish. Now it gives it a little more like softer touch which makes it sound a little nice. And we'll increase the volume here because that softer touch makes it sound a uh, little less volume. So we'll increase it so that you can hear it a little bit more. And then here, we'll go ahead and add uh, some drums. So I'll add this basic kit, which actually sounds like an actual drum kit. And then again, I'll add this clip in, and then I'll extend the loop to four bars, and then I'll right-click in the editor, and then hit the quarter notes. And then I'll scroll all the way down to the bottom where I can find the kick, and I'll just add the basic elements of a beat, which is the kick-snare relationship and the ride element, which is in this case going to be the hi-hat. Okay, so that's very basic, but what I'll usually do with the hi-hats, I'll go ahead and uh, choose the eighth notes. I put the hi-hats on the eighth notes, and then I'll duplicate the first hi-hat, and then I'll lower the velocity on that first hi-hat, I mean the second hi-hat, and then I'll duplicate it across the board, and this will give it a little more texture, as, as you can hear. So it goes up and down a little bit. So it just sounds a, a bit nicer. And there you go. We got the melodic sounds and we got the drums. But now with the melodic sounds, I'll add a compressor because the uh, frequencies that these two uh, sounds are making, the drums and the grand piano, they're kind of interrupting each other. They're they're both occupying some of the same sonic space frequencies. So in order to separate them a little bit, we'll add this compressor to the grand piano, and then I'll side chain the drum kit, okay? The studio drum kit, you just select it there, and then I'll hit play, 
And then I'll lower this threshold until I start seeing the gain reduction on the piano, which brings the piano down a little bit every time a drum note is hit. So that way, every time the drum note is hit, it gives, and the, and the grand piano is lowered in volume a little bit, it gives the drums a little more space to breathe, a little more space to be um, apparent so that you can hear them better. And this actually works a lot better in bassier sounds. It becomes more apparent when you have a lot of heavy bass in your sound. This compressor is really going to help those drums that are usually buried under that bass it gives it a little more room to breathe, a little more room to be heard. So that's why we add the compressor. And then from there, um, I've, I'm noticing now that the piano is kind of not, it could sound a little more brighter. So what I'll do is I'll add this EQ to it and we'll bring the EQ before the compressor so that you know, the order of effects are from left to right so that the EQ can also get compressed. So when we hit play, you can see the frequencies here. We want to bring up the mid frequencies and the high frequencies to bring out that piano a little bit so you can hear it a little bit more. So it's not so much low key, it's like kind of in your face a little bit more. So we'll do that and then now that the higher frequencies are being hit a little bit more on the grand piano, now we gotta lower some of the frequencies on the high end on the drums so that they're not tripping over each other. So what I'll do is I'll select the drum track and then I'll hit auto filter and then auto filter I'll just cut off that high end a little bit. Just cut off that high end. I'll raise this up a little bit. And see, I'll turn it off. They let like those high frequencies are kind of annoying, actually. So you'll cut that off, and then the high end of the piano will have more room to shine. All right, and then from there, uh, I noticed that there's not really a fill here, so we'll just make this little basics. It's like as basic as, as it can get. Here, I'll just have you listen to the last part. And basically what that does, it, it, um, you know, it hints off that the section is ending and then a new section begins. Okay. So that's basically how I'll make a song. Um, from here, what I'll do is I'll add more sections. Now, this could be considered the first verse and the song structure that I usually go with is intro, first verse, chorus, second verse, second chorus, bridge, third chorus, and then outro. So I'll start creating those sections after this, but this is basically, you know, more or less how I would do it. I, I would make those other sections kind of in the similar workflow. So yeah, and then from there, I'll select everything like such. I'll hit the scrubber so it selects the entire song, and then I'll go to File, Export, and then I'll, uh, usually I'll change this to 48000. Uh, four, um, I think it's set on this one by default. So I'll just raise it up a little bit to just give it slightly more quality. And then I'll hit export and then I'll save it. I'll rename it and save it wherever I want. And then that will be my song. So this is my workflow. This is typically how I do things. I don't do things like this all the time, but in general, these are like the main things that I do that I wanted to show you. It took me a long time when I first started using Ableton to actually figure out some of the stuff. No one was there the, uh, to help me. The internet and YouTube was not very lush. There was like barely anything on YouTube. No, there was no tutorials. So uh, hopefully this helped you out a little bit if you're getting started. And if you have a workflow with some things that are very useful that you do, maybe you can share them in the comments so everybody can read them. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm making these videos. I'm not like a tutorial channel or anything. I'm just like, you know, uh, sharing my experiences with you guys. So if you want to comment, if you want to have a chat about music or this video or whatever, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'm trying to communicate more with people who have similar interests. So 
yeah, I would love to have a conversation with you if you want to talk about music or whatnot. So yeah, thank you very much for stopping by and um, please like, share and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a great night.